Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to go ahead and download and install ASP.NET Core to our environment. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is actually navigate to get.asp.net and from there we're actually going to need to pick between ASP.NET 4.6 and ASP.NET 5 which is now called Core 1.0. Then we're going to review some of the installation documentation and we're going to verify that we have the prerequisites installed in our environment. We also need to make the .NET runtime active to the path and we'll explain what that is a little bit later. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So hopefully at this stage you already have Visual Studio 2015 or higher uh, installed and right now I just have the community edition of Visual Studio 2015 but this will work with anything uh, Visual Studio 2015 or higher so we're gonna go ahead and open up Edge browser or you can use whichever browser that you use and I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to HTTP backslash backs or forward slash forward slash get dot ASP dot net and from here you'll see that we're presented with two different choices ASP.NET 4.6 is the full framework, and this includes everything you can see here. Not only can you build web applications, but you also have web forms, MVC, web API, and SignalR, which is really the full .NET environment that is typically what you have on your Windows installations. Now this 4.6 does have all of the latest classes in it that come along with ASP.NET Core. Over here on the right here, you'll see ASP.NET 5 release candidate. And recently, and as you can see up in the banner up top here, ASP.NET 5 is being renamed to ASP.NET Core 1.0. So wherever you see a reference, or if you ever do a search for ASP.NET 5, you're actually looking for ASP.NET Core 1.0. These two things are basically interchangeable and they decided to rename to ASP.NET Core instead of ASP.NET 5, mostly because there needs to be a distinction between the new version of .NET. It's really revamped from the ground up. And in order to indicate that, they've decided to completely rename this version of ASP.NET. Now, when you're deciding between these two, which one to get, 4.6 or ASP.NET 5, you have to consider that ASP.NET 4.6 is really for Windows only. There are ways to get some of the products um, built and working on Linux or Mac OS, but it's much more complicated. ASP.NET 5 or ASP.NET Core is actually built specifically so that it is cross-platform. And that means that you can run ASP.NET 5 applications or ASP.NET Core applications on Linux and Mac OS. It's specifically built so that it can be portable to those other uh, platforms. So you're welcome to install ASP.NET 4.6, but for this course, I'm going to recommend this ASP.NET 5 or ASP.NET Core 1.0, since that's really actually what we're talking about in this series. And I'm not gonna just go straight to the installation. First, I wanna show you the docs section. So we're gonna click on the docs link. So here in the ASP.NET 5 documentation, and again, it's being renamed ASP.NET Core, uh, you'll see that you have all of the main topics like getting started on how to install for your various operating systems. And you can see, you can install for Windows, for Mac OS, or for Linux. There's also some tutorials on how to get started with the new ASP.NET Core. Uh, but right now, I'm just going to focus on the installation section. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Get Started link for installing ASP.NET 5 on Windows. Now, if you haven't already installed Visual Studio 2015, they put a handy little link right here uh, as part of this section for installing with Visual Studio. There's a link directly to the download for Community Edition. And you can see if I click on that link, it goes out and downloads Community Edition of the executable to install Visual Studio. So if you haven't already done so, you're welcome to go ahead and do that now to go ahead and install this. And if you're going to do that, I suggest that you pause the video, go through the installation of Visual Studio 2015 Community Edition, and, uh, and then come back to the video. 
Now for everyone else who already has Visual Studio 2015 installed, there is one thing that you need to make sure that you have checked off in your installation, and that's this Microsoft Web Developers Tools. Now you're probably wondering where the heck is this Microsoft Web Developer Tools checkbox? In order to do this checkbox to make sure that it is checked, you're actually going to have to reopen the installation package for Visual Studio uh, 2015. So I'm gonna go ahead and navigate here to my download section and my VS Community Edition ENU is actually the installation package that I started with. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. So after Visual Studio installation package loads up, if you've already installed Visual Studio, you'll get this little window where it says modify, repair, uninstall. I'm gonna click on modify, and this will give me a list of all of the other options and features that I can install for Visual Studio. And there's a lot here, including Git for Windows, uh, Xamarin, which is um, uh, cross-platform mobile development, uh, and etc etc but what we're really interested in here is this one that's selected here Microsoft Web Developer Tools so make sure that Microsoft Web Developer Tools is selected and that's really the only one that's required in order for you to uh, to run ASP.NET Core 1.0 so if this is not currently checked you're going to want to check it and then select the update button and proceed with the installation to install Microsoft Web Developer Tools. But obviously I already have it installed, so I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of the installation package. Okay, so now that we know that our Microsoft Web Developers Tools has been installed for a Visual Studio, we can go ahead and proceed with the installation for ASP.NET 5, or again, Core 1.0, and I wish they would go ahead and fix all of the uh, the, the times that they name ASP.NET 5 and switch it over to core by now. But we're going to go ahead and click on this link, and then I'm going to go ahead and run the executable. So let's go ahead and agree to the terms and click on install. And you may get this prompt for user, access, uh, user account control. I'm going to go ahead and click on yes. So here we are after the installation is completed, and we get a nice little uh, completion screen. So we can go ahead and click on close. You can see the next step that we have to do is to enable the ASP.NET 5 command line tools. So we have to open up a command prompt and run this DNVM upgrade. Now, I recommend rather than just going up uh, to command prompt, which would typically just be CMD, if you go down here to, I'm going to go to the Cortana and just type in CMD, you'll see we get command prompt. But rather than doing this command prompt, I'm going to go ahead and suggest the developer command prompt for Visual Studio 2015. Now from here, what we need to do is actually go ahead and run DNVM upgrade. What this is essentially doing is installing the .NET runtime environment so that uh, the, the new .NET core environment so that it can be run based upon your active path. So you don't have to go in and specifically locate the, uh, the .NET um, uh, application to run it from there. It's actually now runnable from within any folder on your system. You can see here in the last comments of the installation that it added the bin folder, okay, to the process path and to the user path. And these are your environment variables that are on your installation of Windows. Uh, and if you don't know what the environment variables are for path specifically, uh, I highly recommend that you take a look and find out what that path is because you'll discover that a lot of the uh, typical commands, like if you do just CMD, this CMD is an actual executable that you can run from anywhere. And the only reason why it's executable from anywhere is because there are default paths that Windows looks for uh, in trying to find specific executables to run. And CMD just happens to be, I believe, in the System32 path, which is a default path that Windows looks to to run executables. What we've essentially done is we've put this .NET runtime environment and, and where it's installed, which if we look at this directory, I'm going to go ahead and copy this. If we look at that directory, 
we'll see that the DNX executable application right here is our .NET uh, runtime environment f uh, application. So this is what's actually going to be run if we try to run DNX from anywhere in a command prompt. And you can see you can see here we're verifying that DNX is now available from really anywhere. In fact, I can go all the way to my C drive, just to the root. And even though the DNX executable is not located in my root directory, I can still go ahead and type DNX. And you can see that Windows is able to locate that DNX executable file. Go back to the documentation here. And one last thing that we probably need to cover is that if you are trying to install on either Windows 7 or Windows Server 2008 R2, then you also need to get this Visual C++ redistributable for Visual Studio 2012 Update 4. Uh, and that's only if you're trying to install uh, ASP.NET uh, 5 or ASP.NET Core on one of those two operating systems. As long as you can run this DNX command from anywhere on your system, from any path, then you've successfully installed ASP.NET Core 1.0 onto your system. Further verification, I'm going to go ahead and open up Visual Studio here, and we'll just make sure that the project is available in the new project dialog. I'm going to go ahead and select new project, and under either the Visual C sharp uh, templates you can find uh, we have asp.net web application or you can also go to the subsection of web and see asp.net web application here i'm just going to leave the default because i just want to show you if you click ok and we'll cover this in the next video but we now have asp.net 5 templates web application and if you see this that means that you have successfully installed ASP.NET Core 1.0, or otherwise known as ASP.NET 5, in your Visual Studio environment.